Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today we're jumping into some malicious compliance. Before we start, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and you may learn how to handle your boss when they ask you to do something stupid. All right, our first story today comes to us from Plogan56. Give up on my career or move out? Okay, let's jump right in. This happened recently, and right now things have calmed down, so it feels right to post this here. So about two weeks ago, my best friend, 22, had called me, 23, asking if he could be my roommate if I find a place. I was looking for a place to stay while going to college. I told him, sure, but why? But he said he'd tell me later. We both meet up a few days later and drive about an hour away from our hometown to move into the place. We spent a few hours setting everything up and unpacking, yet he never said anything about why he wanted to move in with me so suddenly. After we were done, he sat down and explained the situation at home. He and his parents had been at each other's throats recently because he had landed a remote job after our summer internship and they thought he was wasting his life playing on the computer. His parents have always done factory and physical labor jobs and look down on people who work from their computers because they don't know what real work is. Side note, his dad actually does his auto shop taxes and other functions from his office and rarely does any mechanic work himself, so it's kind of hypocritical. He continues to tell me that the day before he called and asked me, they had a huge blowout that resulted in his parents giving him the ultimatum of get a real job or get out. And he says he just went to his room and started packing. I'm guessing even if I said no, he was moving out regardless. That brings us to him telling the story to me. When he was done, he looked so relieved. I believe the reason he kept so quiet during the move was because he was holding it in and trying not to go crazy. After that, we both spent the rest of the day hanging out to try and keep his mind off of things. Fast forward three days later, his parents call him asking why his stuff's not in his room. They were gone a few days to give him time to come to his senses, thinking he'd give up his roughly four years of college and internships to get a job as a mechanic starting from scratch. There's nothing wrong with mechanics or people who work labor jobs, but he's been working his butt off these last few years, only for them to basically tell him to drop all that and get a job they want him to get. I leave the apartment to give him and them some privacy and take a quick walk. When I get back 20 minutes later, he's got a wide smile on his face and he tells me the long and short of it. He apparently left a few details out before and this time told me the whole story. Roughly around the time we started working at that paid internship, his parents had been charging him rent, $350 every month, as motivation for him to get a real job. And the blowout they had was about him being able to pay it despite not having a real job they had picked out. They said he needed to grow up, get real work experience, and even went as far as accusing him of stealing to get the money. So he had had enough and packed up while they were gone. The phone call they had was him basically telling them he can't go back home because he's not going to change his major, current job, or career path, so he was staying at the apartment with me. I asked him if he's going to be okay, he assured me that he already explained everything to his other relatives and that they're going to try and talk to his family to see if they can convince them to understand why he wants this job and how computer work is still work. This is going to be our last two semesters and the tuition is already paid off so we're good at the moment as the only thing we got to worry about is the rent which we can both cover pretty well. Honestly, I was going to ask him to split this apartment with me regardless because I found a good apartment complex that had a shuttle to our college and had two rooms open. But I'm still glad I could help him. He says he'll eventually start talking to his parents again, but I don't think that'll happen until after they come to their senses or else they might lose their only son. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there was some really good advice from a user called Three Heathens Mom. It says, OP, please share the following with your friend. Once he does start progressing in his field, he may be tempted to start letting his parents, friends, and relatives know how well he's doing by saying how much he makes, how much he has in the bank, how much he paid for his new car, when he gets a house, what he paid for it, etc. I would suggest to him he do none of that. 
he should only discuss finances with people who will help grow his money or help him keep it. If he reads anything in the various subs, he will see how the minute the previously disparaged relatives saw he had money, suddenly a lot of people were very interested, and in some cases demanding he give it to them. They needed it for their house. They had a child that was more deserving of it. You owe us because we are family. Friends need it, etc. The majority of that drama can be eliminated by just not sharing income information. Wish him the best in his endeavor. OP replied to this comment and they said, Appreciate the advice. We already don't discuss money like that and he's not going to do that just to brag about it. I think he's going to take the high road for now and just keep his distance from them for now. Even if they change, he says he's not moving back and will likely stay in this apartment for the time being. I might show him the comments on this post tomorrow to show that he's not alone on this and that he shouldn't worry about right and wrong right now. <laughs> this story hits really close to home. Try telling people you're a YouTuber and see what they say. Back to the story, one thing that really jumped out to me here, OP, is that your friend has something going for them. They have a friend like you that they were able to move in with to get away from their family, and that's a lot more than most people have. This next story comes to us from Bare Minimum Chef. I did exactly as I was told. Let's jump right in. Sorry for the title, but it's true. It's not really exciting, but it keeps happening more and more these days. So I wanted to share it, mainly to write away my anger at my boss. This isn't structured and I'm not a native English speaker, so this might be hard to read. I apologize for any mistakes I will absolutely make. I am a forklift driver for a supply company in the automotive industry, which means I supply raw materials to the line where they would get processed into the final products like door covers, handles, cup holders, etc. My company has usually six to eight forklift drivers in the morning and midday shift, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. And one or two for the night shift in which production is basically non-existent and maintenance and cleaning, tool changes and the machines take place. Today, I was assigned to the injection molding line, which is the first and most crucial step of all production of the entire line. If this line stands, the entire factory stands still, costing about 1200 euros per minute in material losses plus wages. The thing is, due to the pandemic, vacation season and the heat wave, the production was slowed down considerably from, as my workplace states, 120% to 70%. So we are already short staffed, even for 70%. Instead of six to eight forklift drivers, we were three. One for the injection mold, one for the attached warehouse, and one for the assembly. This means nobody unloads or loads the trucks that are frequenting the factory. In their downtime, so the midday shift, the entire shift, usually the manager would be required to handle these tasks. So me, as one of the faster workers, because I don't have to look at the logistics plans all the time, and know where all the places are helps where I can in assembly because my station and assembly are right next to each other. Management sees it and thinks that my station has a problem because this has to be the case if I don't work my butt off to keep the timing of the machine and orders me to unload three trucks and load them as well. Unloading a truck and clear away the raw materials costs about 10 to 15 minutes, loading about five because the shipment is ready beforehand and put next to the loading bay. This means I couldn't be at my workstation for about 20 minutes. The problem is that the injection molding machine works on an automated schedule and needs to be resupplied exactly every six minutes due to the size of the containers which hold the granulate. But being an efficient, red lazy worker, I usually prep for about 18 minutes to cut down on travel distance and time if things get busy. I work my butt off to keep my current task inside said 18 minutes knowing very well where the blame goes if the factory comes to a standstill because of no supplies. But just as I was to drive back to my workstation, manager comes to me and demands that I have to unload and load the next one as well, whilst he takes his 30 minute break. I don't want to, but I am technically not a worker there, but a time employee, which meant that I'm not covered under labor laws for the specific workplace I am assigned to. Think of it as a subcontractor who basically rents employees to companies for a given amount of time. So manager can just tell me to not come to work anymore without any issue. Sure, my company technically has to continue to pay me, 
but I get a three euro bonus per hour on my base pay just to work at this company, which is on a voluntary basis for the contracted companies. Off to work I went. Of course, the entire factory came to a standstill just five minutes later, but management was out of house on break, and I had specific orders to unload and load this truck. And I took my sweet time, since I had a co-worker to back me up since he heard the order from the manager. And of course, manager was absolutely livid as he came back from break. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, OP was asked a question from a user called CoderJoe1. It said, did mismanagement try to blame you? OP replied to this comment with, yep, but as I wrote, I had my coworker have my back. He is an employee of this company and pretty much there since day one if that holds any value. He is the reason I don't have to look at the plans and know where what and in which amount goes and where I can store excess without it being in the way. Honestly, in this case, OP's pretty lucky that they weren't removed from the place because being a temp worker, there's literally nothing that will keep them in that building if one of the management wants them out. This story right here seemed like a really good example of seagull management. You know, they swoop in, they make a lot of noise, they crap on everything, and they leave. And I'm pretty sure if OP left a sandwich out, management would have stolen that too. This next story comes to us from Oh My Days, three minutes late. Let's jump right in. Preface, I work in a school as support staff. I'm not a teacher. I generally get to work at 8.15. Start time is 8.30. I arrive and go to the staff room and make a coffee and take it to my workstation. My manager doesn't bother with small talk. She's straight into discussing work, asking me questions, etc. Often before I even put my handbag away and fire up my laptop. I get a 45 minute unpaid lunch break, which is a bit long. I'm usually back at my desk within 30 to 35 minutes. A couple of months ago, I arrived at my workstation at 8.33 with my coffee. My manager made a big production of lifting her arm up and reading her watch, which she can't read without glasses on anyway, and she wasn't wearing them, so it was for theatrical purposes, and reminded me about making my coffee after my start time. I made the three minutes up at lunchtime by coming back sooner than my 45 minute break. I take my lunch during the student's lunch. Their lunch is 1 to 1.40. The following day, I arrive back from lunch at 1.45 and manager is hopping from foot to foot because we were needing to start class. I said my lunch is 45 minutes. Maybe I should take lunch before 1 to ensure I'm here at 1.40. She looks at the timetable and says, that doesn't work. We have classes that go until 1, so you can't take lunch until 1. I firmly stated my lunch is 45 minutes, so that means I come back 5 minutes into lessons. She then stated that doesn't work and that she'll get the school to pay me for those 10 minutes. I'm the union representative for my workplace. I said they can't. My 45 minute break is in the award. And in actual fact, if we don't get our breaks, those minutes are paid at overtime rates. I now take my entire 45 minute break, even though I'm done with eating and smoking, I'll fill in the 15 minutes checking Instagram. I also still generally arrive at 8.15 and I now have my pre-work coffee in the staff room and don't ever arrive at my desk until 8.28. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, we have one from a user called Rookme Amadeus. It says, if anyone paid half as much attention to the amount of labor these micromanagers cost any given company or organization, as said micromanagers spend on either trying to do the right thing in the dumbest way possible or just being a power tripping pedant, these people wouldn't last a month in any company. In this case though, it's not just the micromanagers that are using up a lot of time when they could be doing better things, but when somebody micromanages all the people below them, it really kills the initiative or desire to do extra of all those people below the micromanager. It's a case of, well, if you're telling me what I need to do every second of every day, then, well, my job is to do what you say. You've made it clear I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm not going to take initiative. Tell me what to do. This last story comes to us from Real Mammoth 9086 Need to stay later to catch the night shift? No problem. Let's jump right in. Hi all, long time reader, first time poster. Apologies if this doesn't belong here, as I said, this is my first time. 
A little background, I'm in human resources and I work for a manufacturing company. My hourly guys work from 7am to 7pm and 7pm to 7am. June of 2020, I got a new manager. I knew she was going to be a problem because she didn't like doing what me, a generalist, and the coordinator did. Essentially, I did recruiting, onboarding, and the generalist did payroll. So, a few months after she started, she began complaining about how I get there at 7 and leave at 4. She asked me to change my schedule to come in at 8 while the coordinator would continue to work 7 to 4. So, I'm doing this for a couple weeks and she keeps trying to get me to stay later than 5. Which, in my mind, I take a 30 minute lunch, so you're already getting 8.5 hours out of me. After resisting for a while, she begins scheduling meetings for after 5, like 5.30 or 6pm. At this point, I'm irritated but being passive aggressive about it. I'd look at our calendars and propose a time where we would both be free before 5pm. This is how I knew she was just being a jerk. So, she has a meeting with me and tells me that at night she needs to see me more. To which I reply, well, you come in around 9.30am and stay till 7. What do they need me for? Here she then admits it's because she doesn't know how to do some things, rather than admitting she just flat out didn't want to learn. So, I tell her I'm happy to teach her what she doesn't know. But just because I'm salaried doesn't mean I get to be worked like a dog with no extra compensation or time off. Which was another thing she'd get mad about was me taking vacation time for Christmas. Turns out she was upset because it became very apparent when I wasn't around that she didn't know how to do her job. But I digress. So she says I have to start attending mandatory employee meetings and other events that routinely happen after 5 or 6 p.m. I get tired of arguing and agree. First time one of these events is coming, I change my schedule. If the event ends at 7 p.m., I'd come in at 10.30, so I wasn't working any extra hours. First few times, she thought I was just running late that day, but after a week or two of this happened, she realized it was intentional. Anyway, she gave up and a month later, I got a promotion and transferred to a new site. Within months of my leaving, she was put under a microscope as it became obvious to corporate that she didn't know how to do her job. I also got praised from the HR director who explained to someone new that my old boss only survived this long because the person who was doing all the work had left. She got fired. Thanks for reading. Okay, cue controversial opinion because I think OP was a bit of a pushover and did what the boss wanted them to do just so that they wouldn't get in trouble. But that leads the boss to think they can push more people around, and I don't think that's a good thing. It wasn't until OP left the job there that they realized that the manager wasn't pulling their own weight. This sounds to me like OP was doing way more work than they needed to, even if they were indulging in a little bit of malicious compliance coming in later in the day when this person scheduled them for a meeting in the evening. Check out all four OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.